How's it going guys? In today's video, I want to cover whether it makes sense to learn SwiftUI or UIKit in 2022, which is currently the time at which this video is being recorded. And as a lot of you might know, SwiftUI is a very recent framework that Apple has decided to release to make creating apps a bit easier by separating the concerns of the UI and the program itself, of course, such as the functionality. And as you can see in this example here, this is a very simple example in SwiftUI where we can actually create views and inside the views, all we do is call the functionality. So we are capable of mixing them and it's a lot faster to actually create nice layouts such as this one over here. So it's just a completely new way of creating apps, let's say. It just made it so much easier to create views and to add functionality to them than with UIKit. It just made it so much easier than what was there earlier. But that doesn't mean that companies are going to adopt this immediately because SwiftUI is really, really nice and I use it a lot for personal projects, but it still isn't, let's say, quite ready to be pushed into production, such as if you were to go to work for a company, chances are very big that they're still using UIKit because SwiftUI, as far as I know, is only compatible up to iOS 14, which isn't that far back. A lot of companies want to be compatible with at least iOS 12 and iOS 13. So iOS 14 is just a very recent addition. Also, SwiftUI is filled with bugs that we don't really know yet whether have to do with SwiftUI itself or the program's logic. There's still a lot going on with SwiftUI that we don't really know how to handle. There's not much documentation compared to UIKit and compared to anything that's written in Objective-C. So we still have a lot that we have to figure out on our own. But of course, as anything, each year it becomes more and more solidified, which means it's getting better. More companies are adopting it as time goes on. But for 2022, it's incredibly important. You do your best to learn both because while SwiftUI is much easier to use to create nice applications with very little code, it still hasn't been adopted by a majority of companies. And even the team at Apple itself are using UIKit for a lot of the things they're doing to make sure that it's still backwards compatible. Although SwiftUI is adopting a lot of new features that are just great to have, and I personally really enjoy programming in SwiftUI. I am going to start teaching UIKit on this channel as well. And I'm just going to go ahead and do my best to teach what is necessary from UIKit so that you can easily apply for companies and transfer the knowledge of both SwiftUI and UIKit to what your workplace requires. Because eventually we are going to have to translate UIKit to SwiftUI and it depends whether you're a freelancer or working for your own company or working for someone else's company, how much of each you're going to have to know how to use. If you just want to target iOS 14 and iOS 15, that's fine, you can stick to SwiftUI, but as always, it's good to know where things come from and that's why we're going to also jump into UIKit as we progress with creating apps on this channel. I'm also going to be covering how we can translate components from UIKit to SwiftUI. So we don't only have to create apps in UIKit, we can also start using those components in SwiftUI. And that's our main goal, to be able to use everything that Apple has already created and translate it to SwiftUI. And you're going to see this being done more and more as time goes on. Right now, we're still in a very fresh phase of SwiftUI, so we still need a couple of years before it starts becoming something a bit more mainstream. And just to sum up this video, if you are fresh to iOS development, it is recommended you learn both. Personally, I wouldn't be able to tell you which one you should learn first. I personally got started with SwiftUI because I found it much, much easier to create what I wanted to create. Although the features there are much, much more recent, which means it's harder to find documentation on how to do things. But now as time is progressing, it's becoming more and more documented. So you're going to find more and more channels using this and more and more companies are slowly transitioning, although they haven't completely transitioned. And it's highly likely that if you apply for any company, they're going to ask you for some sort of knowledge on UIKit, just because it's used almost everywhere. And translating an app from UIKit to SwiftUI isn't possible in every situation. There are still lots of bugs in SwiftUI that UIKit is known for handling quite properly. So until that gets patched in future releases and until it becomes 
backwards compatible enough, it's just not going to be a standalone learning process. You're going to have to learn both UIKit and SwiftUI if you want people to take you seriously as an iOS developer. But that shouldn't put you off. If you're learning SwiftUI right now, just stick with that. Take it one step at a time because you will get all of this stuff down as time goes on. And to make things better, every single year that passes, people are using UIKit less and less compared to SwiftUI. So if you hang on in there, SwiftUI is definitely going to have a major impact on Apple devices, but I still wouldn't recommend ruling out the necessity of learning UIKit. But anyways, guys, that's actually all I wanted to talk about in today's video. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.